questions? Oh, I'm fine. Okay. You know. Do you want me to record the questions? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But just stop it and restart it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah. Uh, when you refer to the country of the north. Yeah. Who are you referring to? Which country is that? The country of the north. That's in the second half of the talk. <laughs> That's in the, I, I talk about that, but I'll give the game away already. Jeremiah tells us, Yahu tells us that the north country is by the Euphrates, which is not the Mississippi. So it's not here. It's in the Middle East. And I, I believe it's north. The northern part of the Euphrates, because that's north of Israel. Well, that's, what's north, north of Israel? North from where? What's that? It has the north from where? We'll find out when we get there. But uh, uh, if if uh, if an Israelite is referring to the north country, I imagine that's north. Uh, it's certainly along the Euphrates River. When armies from Babylon came. They came along the fertile crescent of the Euphrates and then they came down. It, uh, Jacob got his wives from Aram, from Syria, in the north. Uh, so I suspect it's in that area. Uh, and that's a very good question. Um, yeah, so if you want to get into real estate, you could buy up some land there now and it'll go up in price when the lost tribes return. But um, if you get it wrong um, and it's just left a bit or right a bit, then uh, you might lose some money. You might um, have Al Qaeda on your doorstep. <laughs> I understand that if you live in Australia, I understand this right is going to be north. But if you live in America, this one is going to be east. No, it's the north country as far as uh, the prophets are concerned that we're in. And uh, Jeremiah was. Jeremiah was in Israel. So when he spoke of the north country, he meant north of where he was. So, so that's how I understand it. That's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, I was talking, I've talked to people about uh, Ezekiel chapter 40. Yep. On, and I think you might have answered one of my questions that I've always had because when you get, look at Ezekiel 40 and on, it's talking about the prince and him doing the sacrifices and all that. But it doesn't say, in, the, in 40 through 48, it doesn't say who the prince is. In Ezekiel 37 and 38, which you've been talking about, yep. it says the prince is David. So I guess maybe we're assuming that by the time we get to chapter 40, we already understand who the prince is. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it could well be David because he's called a prince. And he's, he's also called a king uh, under the king of kings, ultimately. Uh, but he's also called a prince. So, uh, yeah, uh, certainly David will be around at that time, I believe. Uh, I'm still not exactly sure when David will rise. Is it going to be just before the tribulation, after, a dece- after they raise up the kingdom of David? We'll talk about this in the second half. Uh, or is it right at the end of the tribulation when David's raised up? Uh, but certainly God is going to be restoring the Davidic throne and a descendant of his on the throne at the very least when the house of Israel and the house of Judah return. And Ezekiel 34, uh, no, I think it's 34, and and Jeremiah 23 both talk about David ruling over a reunited Israel and Judah. So it's not a matter of if, but when. Uh, Is it going to be before the tribulation that David has raised up or after the tribulation? Uh, Certainly his... His, his government, the Davidic uh, line is going to be raised up in government when Israel and Judah return. And I believe that is happening. We're in the process of that beginning already. And the Jews being in the land, their secular, I'll talk about this later on, the secular government is going to give way to a religious government at some stage soon. Yeah. Uh, are there any other questions? Back, yep. That you had Elijah coming back just before the false prophet. Yeah. And I, I just wonder if you'd expound on that a little bit. Most people kind of seem to put that in the other order. Right. Well, I, I guess for me, uh, Elijah returns uh, to restore restore all things as part of that restoration move of God. So it's related to 
the regathering of Israel. And uh, I, I believe we're going to be in the land when Elijah comes. There may be some disagreements of exact timing. It says he comes before the great and terrible day of the Lord to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. In the New Testament it quotes this, but it says the hearts of the fathers to the sons and the, and the, uh, the wicked to the wisdom of the just or something to that effect. So it reinterprets it. So uh, he, he's going to come before the great and terrible day of the Lord. I believe... I put the whole tribulation period as part of that day of the Lord. Uh, that that it, maybe some people may say it's midway through the tribulation. I don't believe so. I believe it's before that. I don't know that Elijah is one of the two witnesses. We'll certainly find out. I don't. I, I know Moses and Elijah are like the two witnesses, um, but he's certainly coming before the day of the Lord. And so I suspect that it's uh, to bring reformation to a reunited Israel and Judah before the tribulation. And that's why I've put it there in that, in that, in, in that place. Uh, are there any other questions? Well, maybe what you can do is, uh, while people may get drinks and get water, yep. is up on the screen, leave up that timeline he's referring to where you actually have the World War Three and stuff. So we can actually see the perspective of... Uh, you know where you you define when you see this the tribulation period versus where all these other things were. Okay. Most of what we're being taught is showing them all overlapping. You know, really, like seven year period. All this happens. Seven years. Monty Judah has a very similar sort of uh, timeline in some ways, but he takes all of this stuff that I talk about and he slots it into the first half of the tribulation. And you know that's pretty busy. Uh, and uh, I can't see it working, and, and I'll show you some reasons why. And it's related to Gog and Magog, and it's related to a few things. They're burying the bodies for seven years. I'm, I'm not going to be on burial detail when I'm running for my life in the tribulation. You know, doesn't make sense. It's got to happen before. That's why I say the American timelines, I say American because Australians don't have timelines. They're, at, they're, they're sleeping, and uh, that's no disrespect to my brothers in Australia. Uh, but um, I think that uh, there's some things that occur beforehand. Yeah. Rory, you want us to come back together in about 30 minutes? Yeah, that's right. You guys need to take about 30 minute break, do whatever you want to, stretch your legs. Come back here in 30 minutes.